Hey guys, welcome to the high ground. My name is Fabio and today we'll be talking about how to identify terrain features from landscape on your map and vice versa. And we will have a look at navigating with your compass and actually walking a bearing. Welcome to the fifth part of this land nav series. As said, today we will pick a point in nature and I'll show you how to find it on a map. Then we will just pick one point on the map and I'll show you how to find it in nature. And last thing, I will show you how to actually navigate, walk a compass bearing or an azimuth. Before we start, I'd like to lose a few words on terminology. So some people say an azimuth, some people say shooting a bearing. For the purposes of this video, it just means the difference between the magnetic north and the direction you are actually looking in, in degrees. So that's all it. We don't have to go too much into detail about the terminology any further. It's really just two interchangeable words for the same thing. One thing I won't show today is how to actually shoot the bearing with your compass. I showed this in the third video of this series, so I don't want to waste your time and show it again. If you're not sure how to use a compass, how to shoot a bearing with it, please go back to the third video of this series. There I really explain it in length. Another thing is today, for the purposes of what we do, I know my position. So I determined my position by terrain association in the case right now. If you're not sure how to determine your position with a map or with a compass, you will also find that in video two and three of this series. Today I'm standing in the hillside of Switzerland. It's really beautiful spring morning and we have a lot of little farms spread all over the hills. And now for purposes of this video, I just want to find out which farm is where on the map. So I will pick a farm right over there and then we will see if we can find it on the map with the methods that I'll show you in a second. You can see we have quite a few farms here but this one over there to the left is the one we will choose to identify. Okay we chose a farm now let me shoot a bearing something like that. Oh, come on. Okay, we have our bearing. As you can see, we have a bearing of approximately 240, 244 degree. Now let's put that on the map. Okay, let's see if we can get this going. So I said we know where we are and we're exactly here at this point. We still have the 240 something degrees in our compass and we just put the compass on the map. And the important thing is we actually looked in this direction. So I also have to put the compass on the map in this direction. And now the only thing I have to do is I put one edge of the compass to the point where we are and then I align the grid lines with the azimuth lines in the middle of the compass bezel. Let me briefly do that like this. And then we just follow the compass edge. And here we hit buildings. That means we looked at a farm that is over here that is called Großacker. And that's already the charm, that's how you do it, we identified that landscape uh, point. After we did this, now let's actually take a point from the map and see if we can find it out in nature. So I'd say let's go with, with this little summit here. It's 651 meters of altitude and as said we're here. So the only thing we do is we put again one edge of the compass to the point where we are, one edge of the compass to the point where we want to go through, and then we turn the bezel that I put now to zero. 
until the azimuth lines again align with the grid line of the map. And I have a grid line down here and I go to the further right azimuth line and we're aligned now. And it says 260 degrees, if you can see that. Well, like that. Yes, 260 degrees. At this point, I'd like to introduce you to another tool, the protractor. Um, there are different types of protect protractors and we will look at that tool in more details in a future video. But this one is a special one. It has this little line in the middle. I don't know if you can see it. Now you should be able to see it. And this protractor, we just align it with the point where we are. Make sure that the lines of the protector also align with the grid lines. And then we can just put this little piece of cord. Whoop. Now I lost my point. Here we are to the point where I want to actually go. And then I will also get the result of roughly 260 degrees. As said, we will go into it a little bit more in detail. I know it's transparent, so it's a little bit hard for you to see, but I at least wanted to show you that thing. Now it's the same thing like shooting a bearing, just the other way around. I turn myself until I have the red in the shed. Then I look through the notch and the hill that I can see is the one we're looking for. It's that easy. Now as you saw on the map, this was the farm we identified and directly to the right this was the hill that I found with the compass by just using the bearing. And now we learned a very important thing. We learned that we don't need to have an actual look at the landscape in order to determine the direction of a chosen point. That means even if we are totally blind to our surroundings, as long as we know where we are, we can just take a bearing and walk that bearing and we will get to our destination. To demonstrate that, let's head back a little bit deeper in the forest so that we don't have such a good view of the surroundings. So I went a little bit deeper into the forest now. You can see it can be pretty dense. I mean, even in spring and it's not a very thick forest, it's, it's more or less open tree land, but there is still an end to how far you can see, right? That might be 30, 40 meters and I don't see anything behind that. So for me, that means I know I have to go in this direction I, again, as in the last example, I just took the bearing from the map, from the point where I am right now, to the point where I want to go. And now I'll show you on my compass how you actually walk in that direction. Okay, here I have my compass. As you can see, I have dialed in 40 degrees up here. And the only thing I have to do now is I have to turn my compass until the red needle is in the shed. And then I just follow the direction of travel arrow towards my intended goal, my destination. That's it. It's that easy. The last thing I want to briefly talk about is what happens when you hit an obstacle. May it be a sheer rock wall, a gorge or a river that you can't pass in on that spot, something like that. Well, you always have the possibility to just take the bearing you went, add 90 degrees to one direction, walk that for a distance, go back to the bearing, and then walk 90 degrees in the other direction until you're back on the previous course, and then just start walking the bearing again. That requires one thing, you have to be able to estimate how far you already went. So did I go 500 meters? Did I go for one click? How far did I go already? And this will be topic of one of the next videos when we talk about additional navigation aids like protractors, ranger beads, pace counts, etc. So stay tuned for that one. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I hope it was somewhat helpful for you. 
If yes, please leave us a like. Any questions, post them in the comments. I'm of course also interested in how you navigate the wild. Do you do something different? So let us know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much and I'll see you next time.